Hello, scaredy cats. Welcome to Jump Scare, where we are talking about witches. Hey, d um, what are you doing? I'm talking about witches for my show. Yeah, but it's not your show. Oh, it's this is this is Ohio. <laughs> this is my show. Okay, just because we both chose the same topic doesn't mean you can just uh, steal my show time. But this is this is my show. What about this Jap is Ohio? Japanese witches. It's still me. I did <laughs> Get out! Dang it! Ohio. Welcome to another episode of Ohio, where I talk about anime, its subculture, history, and themes with you. I'm your host, Jacqueline Davis. Historically speaking, the word witch and its many translations has been used to describe women in patriarchal societies for a very long time. Japan is no exception. Throughout Japanese history, there are various sorceresses, such as Takayasha Hime, who used her power to control giant frogs to avenge her father's death and lead a rebellion, or Tamamo no Mae, the evil Kyubi no Kitsune, who caused a civil war. While their supernatural abilities are up to debate, they were real historical women who made lasting impacts on Japanese history. Similar to the Western witch, the Japanese witch was often known to have familiars. However, in the case of Japanese legend, the ability to practice witchcraft depended on having a familiar, or tsukimono. Tsukimono are possession spirits that were blamed for physical and especially mental ailments for centuries. However, sometimes someone can strike a deal with a tsukimono. The tsukimono would receive food and personal care as a family pet and in turn provide magical services such as protecting the family and harming their enemies. These people were known as tsukimono suji or tsukimono zukai and feared by all. The Tsukimono Suji wasn't always a woman, but the Tsukimono was passed down through the maternal line of the family. As a result, whole families were ostracized, and the women in those families had a lot of difficulty getting married. Interesting enough, looking through history, most families labeled as Tsukimono Suji were well-to-do. In all probability, most were labeled not because they were actually witches, but because they just had jealous neighbors. Cats also feature heavily in the myths about Japanese witches. It was believed that young girls visiting temples after dark could be targeted by a witch who would appear as a kindly old woman. Once the girl was successfully lured to the home of the witch, she would be devoured. Due to the fact that cats tend to hang around uh, various shrines and temples, it was believed that they were witches in disguise, watching and waiting for their next target. Today, witches and their familiars are not always evil as they were before. Much like in the West, the idea of the witch has become a symbol of feminine strength, capable of good or evil. In Japan's case, this has led to the guiding familiars in the magical girl genre, much like Luna from Sailor Moon. Furthermore, in the island kingdom of Ryuku, which was only annexed into Japan in 1879 as Okinawa, the women's roles as spiritual advisors were highly respected. The Ryukyuan religion, while influenced by Shinto, Buddhism, and Confucianism, was originally primarily focused on the worship, worship of their ancestors and local spirits. Because of this, women known as Noro and Yuta are often sought after for spiritual guidance. For the purposes of this episode, I will focus on the Yuta. However, keep an eye out for the next episode where I will be discussing both the Noro and the Miko, or Shinto priestesses. While both are classified as Kaminchu, or god people, Yuta are different from the Noro in that they are unofficially sanctioned mediums. Much like the wise women of the West, they perform offerings to the gods, predict natural disasters, exorcisms, and even just basic family counseling if it's concluded that the family's problems are not actually the fault of an angry ancestor. All of this, of course, for a price. A woman becomes a yuta after experiencing a kamidari. A kamidari is characterized by a variety of illnesses, both physical and mental. If a woman suspects that she is going through a kamidari, she can contact another yuta to see if she is becoming one herself. If she is undergoing a kamidari, then she begins her yuta training. If she never seeks help from a spiritual guide, it is said that she can go insane and bring catastrophe upon her family. While people still seek the aid of the Utah today, they were not always welcome. Many believed them to be nothing more than con artists, and they even used them as convenient scapegoats in the cases of unexplained murders or natural disasters. In these cases, the women were usually found guilty of casting some sort of a curse on the victim and then 
beheaded. There was a period of time in Ryuku where all things Chinese were encouraged and all things Japanese discouraged. As a result, Confucianism flourished. The male Confucian scholars abhorred the yuta and banned them in the Toki Yuta Toga Sadame, calling their work superstitions. That didn't really work though. Yuta still provide services for their communities to this day for a price. That's all we have time for on this episode of Ohio. What are your favorite examples of witches and witchcraft in Japanese culture? What did I miss? What should I talk about next? Let me know in the comments down below and make sure to subscribe to PopNerd TV and check out popnerdtv.com for articles, reviews, and more. If you want to help support PopNerd TV and get exclusive content, we are on Patreon and Teespring. I'm Jacqueline Davis. Oh, bye! Let's the guiding familiars, like in... I need to skip, stop, skip stopping words. Skip stopping words, okay. Ban them in the Toki Yuta Toka Sadame. Toki Yuta, Toki Yuta, wait, let me read that one more time. Toki Yuka Togo Sadame. Toki, Toki Yuka Toga Sadame. Okay, got it.